Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we're going to be reviewing one of the most unique bases to come out for 2021, and that is the Reverend Fatfish32 Brad Hauser Signature. Let's do this. This is the Reverend Fatfish32 Brad Hauser Signature Bass, and it's easily one of the most unique basses that I've seen to come out for 2021. The semi-hollow Carina body with a solid maple back is finished in a gloss black, and it features two very interesting pickups here. In the neck position, we have the Reverend Thick Brick Pickup and this is a specially wound neck pickup. This isn't just like throwing a Stingray pickup up in the neck position. Uh, this is a very nice pickup. And on the other side, we have the Reverend P-Blade pickup. We've seen this pickup in the likes of the Michel and Degiocello signature base, the uh, Fellowship that we reviewed, as well as the Decision P, which we also reviewed. Excellent sounding pickup. However, it's not in the typical P position. Instead, it is in the almost Stingray sweet spot right down here. It's not in the jazz position, so it's a little bit closer to center, but very interesting pickup placement as well as pickup choice here, and we're gonna see how it sounds in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the controls. Reverend basses are all passive. So what we have is a master volume, a master tone, and a blend control. And uh, this is a proper dual gang blend, and it does a great job of blending the pickup signals together. Where you can get some unique tones, um, not at the extreme, so at like, you know, 75% or 25%, it sounds very different versus going completely to one pickup or the other. Some blend controls are basically a glorified three-way switch, so uh, it's nice to have that level of flexibility on an instrument like this. For the neck, this is a set neck, 32-inch scale, five-piece maple and walnut neck with a maple fretboard, black binding, and black block inlays, as well as this cool inlay on the first fret, which is uh, has been in the Reverend Fatfish, uh, the first iteration of this bass, which had a J pickup versus, or a or J blade pickup versus the Music Man style pickup here. Anyways, the neck is a 42 millimeter nut width, a very comfortable profile, and Reverend Signature reverse headstock. Add a slight slant to provide some tension on the nut, so there's no need for a string tree here. The tuners being used here are Hipshot licensed tuners. These are excellent tuners. They do a great job. I install these on a lot of my bases, and uh, it's great to see these coming out of uh, the factory here. I believe most reverends, if not all reverends, are using Hipshot tuners on their bases, so uh, that's definitely a thumbs up to quality there. And for the bridge, I forgot to mention that, this is, I believe, the Sung Tu or the Sung Il bridge, a Korean bridge, which is the same type of bridge that's used by FGN as well on their Mighty series uh, bases, the Mighty Power and the Mighty Jazz. This is easily one of my favorite bridges because it allows you to string through the body, has nice mass to the saddles and the construction in general, and uh, it is a quick release if you want to string through the bridge. So you have a lot of uh, stringing options here and it's a very flexible bridge as well as good looking. I think this is a great looking bridge. Now let's go ahead and turn the bass around real quick. Around back, we see a whole lot of nothing other than the string ferrules down here at the bottom. That's because, again, this is a passive instrument. No batteries required. And up at the neck joint, we see that there are no screws or no neck plate because this is a set neck instrument. That means the neck is glued into place. And this is very similar to basses like my Gibson Les Paul Jr. Tribute. Um, and I know plenty of other bass manufacturers do set neck as opposed to a bolt on. Uh, we can see back here the beautiful grain on this five piece maple and walnut neck. And up at the headstock again, hip shot tuners, thumbs up. So very nice back here. In regards to the weight of the Fatfish 32, this is coming in at 8.4 pounds, which I would call relatively average for a, a medium scale instrument. So pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> in regards to the weight of the Fatfish 32, this comes in at 8.4 pounds on my scale, and that's relatively average for a uh, medium scale instrument, but in the overall spectrum of bases, that is pretty lightweight. 
So how much does the Reverend Fatfish 32 cost? That is around $14.99 US. Now that's kind of steep in regards to uh, the rest of the Reverend lineup with most of the other bases coming in at around uh, $9.99 to $11.99 or something like that. However, this is a semi-hollow base. It's a signature base. It has a lot of great details and a very unique pickup configuration. So uh, in my opinion, with how it plays and how it sounds, I think, I mean, it's priced relatively well. I'm not going to call it a bargain anything, but it's hardly a ripoff. I mean, this is a, an excellent instrument and I'm very glad that I have one. I did not get this at a discount. I purchased this from a retailer. This is the NAM example. All the Reverend basses and guitars that were shown at NAM were already sold to a retailer. And I actually reached out to that retailer directly and purchased this instrument. So I did not get this directly from Reverend. Reverend is not sponsoring this video. I'm not being paid by Reverend in any way, shape or form. This is my bass. Now I know you guys are wondering, what does this bass sound like? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. Very nice, very nice. Now, if you haven't seen my unboxing of this bass, uh, I talk about how this is the NAM show bass that we played in Summer NAM, and uh, it's kind of special because it was on TV with uh, Dale, a uh, member of the channel here, and uh, I don't know, just a cool bass. He got some TV coverage with it, and it's just a memento from a good trip and a good time, so I like this bass a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just with like pretty much every single reverend I've played, it just has a nice growl to it. Their in-house pickups just are high output and they're not lacking any cojones. So these are very, very good pickups. Speaking of the pickups, let's go ahead and play with this blend control a little bit and then we'll start messing with the tone. First, let's check out the neck pickup by itself, the thick brick. Oops, I'm touching the bridge pickup. The thick brick. <laughs> <laughs> This is a fat sounding pickup here. It has a lot of definition though. I mean, you're not losing out on that high end. It's just a very, it's a full sounding pickup. <laughs> now let's take the tone down to about 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Very nice, very nice. Now let's go ahead and take the tone back up all the way, and we're gonna take the blend control and just turn it about halfway between the neck pickup and both pickups. So you can get that fat neck pickup sound with just a little bit of uh, more treble to it with the, uh, the P over here. So let's compare. It's subtle, but it's there. Anyways, let's go to the other extreme and check out this P blade pickup over here at the bridge. <laughs> wow, so this P blade pickup definitely takes on a different character in this position versus the more P centric position where it is in the decision and the fellowship basis. I think it sounds great here. Almost has a bit of a stingray characteristic, but with a bit of a different voicing and a bit more, I guess, growl to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely has some spice. This is a great sounding pickup. Now let's take the tone down to about 50%. Those harmonics also ring out so beautifully with this bridge pickup here. Anyways, let's take the tone down to about 0%. <laughs> yes, 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 this is a great sounding bass. Let's go ahead and take the tone back up and bring the blend control to about halfway between uh, center and the bridge pickup. <laughs> yeah, this is this is fun to play. This is a very fun bass. It's very easy to play too with this 32 inch scale. I think medium scales are definitely becoming more of a thing and I'm glad to see it because they're very fun. Now let's go ahead and center the blend control one more time and play with the pick. See how it sounds. We're using a Dunlop felt pick. <laughs> Thank you. 
Very nice, very nice. We're gonna go over to the neck pickup now and check that out. <laughs> Still working on that. And let's go ahead and check out the bridge pickup. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the bridge pickup especially sounds really good with a pick. I dig it. Now let's go ahead and center everything one more time and let's see how she slaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it slaps pretty well. Uh, now let's go ahead and go to the bridge pickup, I mean neck pickup, and slap her again. <laughs> Yeah, these pickups have some kick. So when you're soloing them, you definitely get a bit more output versus when you have them both together, where you do get a bit of a more scooped midsection and a little bit less output. There's, a, I would say, about maybe 5% volume reduction versus soloing the pickups. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and do that one more time with the bridge pickup now. <laughs> Also slaps well. Finally, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. I'm gonna go ahead and center the blend control and I'll also solo each pickup.
So here are my final thoughts on the Reverend Fatfish 32. I think that this is an extremely unique instrument in a sea of, you know, jazz bass and P bass clones from many other manufacturers. We have something that's truly unique with this thick brick pickup at the neck position and this P blade pickup over in the Stingray bridge position. I mean, this is a very unique combination and where else are you gonna find this pickup combination, especially in a semi-hollow medium scale bass with a reverse headstock. So Reverend definitely hit it out of the park here when it comes to originality and I think they executed it extremely well. Reverends have always had extremely high build quality and I absolutely commend them for that. Every Reverend that I've played has been top tier. Uh, most have been lightweight. I think the Decision P was a bit on the heavy side, but my Reverend Fellowship, which I had, was extremely lightweight at like seven and a half pounds. This is a, about eight and a half pounds, which is also quite lightweight. And overall, I think their build quality is exceptional, especially for the price. Speaking of the price again, this comes in at around $1,500 US. And this is probably one of the most expensive Reverends in their lineup. However, because of the unique pickup configuration, um, this is probably... <laughs> However, because, you know, the unique pickup configuration, the extra detail that goes into making a semi-hollow bass, especially with a set neck, and also being a signature model, I can understand why this commands a premium. At this price point, you are going to find some entry-level American-made Fenders, as well as some G&L basses, and some higher-end Ibanez basses. You're even approaching second-hand Stingray territory, and well beyond the uh, Sterling by Music Man price points. Uh, however, I think that this is at least a decent value for what you're getting. I don't, I wouldn't call this a great value, but I wouldn't call this, you know, you're getting robbed either. The quality is there, and I definitely think that this can command the price that it's currently listed for. So what am I going to rate the Reverend Fatfish 32 Brad Hauser Signature Base? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this base. Four claws out of five. It's an extremely unique base that's very well built, sounds great in all pickup configurations, and will definitely hold its own in a mix with their high output pickups. This base don't need no stinking preamp. I really like the details with the black binding and black blocks on this maple fingerboard. I think it looks great paired with the black body. It's almost like a Getty Lee vibe and I'm a big Rush fan, so <laughs> even though it's obviously quite different, I mean, this is Brad Hauser's signature and Brad Hauser specified all this stuff. Uh, I still just, I dig the look and I, I think it kind of, it just reminds me of the Getty Lee stuff, so close to my heart. Anyways, I think this is an overall great package. Uh, if you're looking for a cool semi-hollow bass that is like nothing else that you're going to see, definitely check one of these out. And if you like the tones what you hear, I would definitely pick one up. That will do it for this review, but let me know what you think about the Fatfish 32 down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the Reverend Brad Hauser Signature Fatfish 32. And as always, until we groove again.